Good morning, church. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. Today is the first Sunday after Christmas and the last Sunday of 2020. And my message for you is that we will not keep silent. Surely we did not keep silent during our Advent season this year because it was really filled with joyful shouts for Christ's birth. From John the Baptist's outcry in the wilderness to Tim's passionate reading of the angels' good tidings to Virgin Mary last Sunday, we did not keep silent. From our Advent hymn, Rise Up, Peace Eternal, to the beautiful songs of joy offered by our virtual choirs, we did not keep silent. Now this message of not keeping silent is from the prophet's words on behalf of God's people in today's scripture reading. Quote, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, unquote. And just like the prophet clothed by God with the garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness, we are dressed up like a crown of beauty and a royal diadem in the hand of God. Just like the prophet's shouts of joy, our Christmas readings and songs reveal the beauty of our praise and thanksgiving for God's gift and for God's gift of Jesus coming among us. We did not keep silent. Amen. Now, speaking of clothing and gift, I bet that some of us have just got gifts of new clothes for Christmas. How many of us over the years have gazed into a box to discover slacks and skirts, blouses and vests, sweatshirts and pajamas, all of a dizzying array of colors and styles? New clothing is really awesome, right? A new outfit always somehow makes us feel renewed, which is also a broad historic truth for human beings. Throughout the centuries, we have loved to adorn our bodies with togas and capes, with drapes and scarves, with headdresses and caps, with loincloths and, well, you get the picture. Whether we want to admit it or not, Clothing speaks about who we are. Brides and grooms, princes and princesses all deck themselves out with garland or jewels to express something, to make a statement about their identity. For example, I always enjoy the camera shots of my wife, Esther, when she walks in the backyard of our apartment in China with my daughter, Peggy, adorned with another new beautiful blouse or skirt. And it's always a pleasure to see her so happy with her new clothing and to hear the compliments from our neighbors, friends, and relatives. Therefore, we really get the picture. We can truly understand why the prophet rejoices with his whole being when God has clothed him in the garments of salvation. However, being a text of joy and celebration, Isaiah 61 through 62 is also a text of need, of vindication. The prophet keeps proclaiming his visions of justice in today's scripture. Quote, God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. Unquote. In other words, having looked forward to the coming salvation of God's people in the midst of their crisis and struggles during their exile, the prophet points out the urgent issue of justice, that he will not keep silent or get any rest until actions are taken to make things right. I can't help but wondering, isn't that also the reason why Jesus comes into the world? I remember Pastor Veronica's recent sharing 
on Jesus' scripture reading of Isaiah 61 in Luke 4. And like the Hebrew Bible prophet, Jesus not only looks forward to the deliverance of the poor, the weak, and the marginalized among the Judeans, but speak and act on their behalf to deliver them with God's justice. Isn't that also the reason why we are called by Christ as a prophetic community? Throughout this extraordinary year of 2020, we have witnessed widespread COVID-19 infections and Black Lives Matters movement all over the US and the world. We have experienced anxiety and frustration over irresponsible political leaders who either abuse their power or silently enable the abuse of power. Even a president charging a series of unreasonable accusations against the fair process of the presidential election and still refusing to take COVID seriously or to pay attention to anyone else suffering till this day. As a prophetic community, we have also spoken and acted against the false visions of false prophets who claim that everything is all right when everything is not all right. From anti-immigration, sorry, from anti-immigration policies using pandemic as an excuse to police brutality even in the midst of peaceful nonviolent protests against systemic racism, we have not kept silent. From COVID guidelines concerning stages of returning and using our church building to the establishment of our anti-racism justice task force with components of action, education, and healing, we have not got rest. Like a beam of light at the end of a tunnel, Isaiah 61 to 62 is an oracle of true vision from dark reality into bright future. It is very much relevant to our Christmas season and to our current transition from 2020 to 2021. Therefore, like the Hebrew Bible prophet, we should not just proclaim beautiful ideals, but also realistic actions as our good news. So what are the beautiful ideals of new clothing for us? in 2021? And what are the realistic actions for us to take in order to make things right? I believe that the new clothing here and now is that the pandemics of COVID-19, economic exploitation, racism, sexism, and so on will not remain forever. As we mourn over the loss of human lives, relationships, and connections during the pandemics. Let us keep looking forward to the coming restoration of people's physical, mental, and spiritual health from God in response to our crisis and struggles. As we reflect upon the historic issues embedded in the problems of some long existing system like the police and the monopoly, let us keep speaking and acting upon the urgent need to deal with problems like racial, economic, and eco-injustice that have caused uncountable broken relationships in the world. For as surely as the sun rises and as surely as the earth brings forth its shoots, so will the Lord God cause righteousness and praise to spring before all the nations. On this first Sunday after Christmas and the last Sunday of 2020, the message from the prophet and from Jesus is that salvation is at hand. Just like our new clothing for Christmas celebration, it is available. It is not in short supply, but is overflowing and abundant in the wonder of God's redeeming love, both for us and for all God's creation on earth. The meaning of the Christmas season, therefore, is not just joy of celebration of Jesus' birth, but also the need for vindication on behalf of the poor, the weak, and the marginalized 
in our society because Jesus and his family were among them. It is not just about ideals of beautiful garments and robes in the vision of a better world, but actions of justice for the people of color, for the LGBTQIA folks, for our mother nature, that we can really make the world a better place. They are like two sides of one coin, which is the good news. They cannot be separated from one another. So as we look forward to the coming new year, let us rise up in thanksgiving for God has down in the combo stable. Let us make our light shine and refuse to keep silent about the joyful hope of salvation as well as the sad reality of the pandemics. Let us put on the new clothing of hope, peace, joy, and love eternal and cry out for the saving power of our God a pound for the powerless in face of all struggles and injustice. May their vindication shine out like the dawn and their salvation like a burning torch. Thanks be to God.